Hello, 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 Gareth here, and this is my artist update, but I'm going to call it my creative update, or my creative something. <laughs> um, I thought I decided, but suddenly I forgot. Maybe my creative update, uh, it will come back to me, but I thought that would be a better name. So anyway, I've been doing a lot of painting, which is wonderful. And um, this is where I will begin. So I went to a place a few years ago called Yanagawa. And it was a beautiful place, small town, maybe village, in Fukuoka Prefecture, Japan. And it had lots of canals in the uh, town and they had these punts and you could ride on them and go around the town and I had a lovely time with my family. Anyway, on the way back, it was evening time, the sun was setting and I saw this rice field and then in the distance these trees and houses and it was beautiful. However, I'm a little disappointed with this painting of that scene. So I think the sky is lovely. I think these clouds are really beautiful. I love these clouds and I want to paint something like this again in the future. However, I think this doesn't work, the ground area. I think the colours are too different. So I need to make the colours similar, I think. And maybe just make all of that area quite dark. Maybe really distant things blue, then here dark, and then possibly at the front, some greenery. So there you go. And I had another go, and even worse, I think. So there you go. But I really enjoyed making this glowing sky. I, I thought, it looks really, really good. So um, what I did, and I don't know why now, I decided to paint that glowing sky and do a winter tree and then do a rice field like this. And I was really happy with this image. I thought that was very good. So this is why I'm calling it like a creative update or creative something because this is really what it is about, like having these ideas, creative ideas, and then developing new paintings. And then I went on and did another one. Now, I think this is a massive improvement. Uh, I think that sky is beautiful. It really glows. There's a lovely colour gradation. And I think these clouds at the bottom are ever so nice. They're soft. They've got a lilac colour. The tree is nice and I love this field. In this one, you can see, I think, that I've done a background as well. So, oh, I did a background in this one as well. But this one is definitely an improvement. So the other one will get binned. A lot of things I have to bin. That's why it's good to do these creative updates. Then it's very easy to throw away all the, the rubbish. Um, and then I did another one, and I think this is also very good. Not quite as good as the previous one, but still very good. And then I had the idea of turning this into a spring tree with foliage, leaves, whatever. So I did some practice at painting trees, and I turned that into a watercolour lesson. And I'm very happy with these trees. And I did some more. That one isn't very good. <laughs> and then I did some more because practice makes you much better. So I got really good at painting these trees. So, and it was a lot of fun. And then I went and did the scene, but this time with a tree in foliage, maybe a spring tree. And I'm really happy with this. I think it looks very, very good. And then I did another one. I'm a bit crazy. 
but I think that looks beautiful as well. And I did another one with a bird. And I'm really happy with just the textures and the colours in these paintings. I know it's, it's not completely natural, is it? But I don't care because I don't want to be just simply a natural painter. That's not wrong, but I like to experiment and just try things and like have the painting itself speak. Even though I love places, I'm, I'm totally into places and landscapes, but I like to just go off somewhere. What am I trying to say here? When I begin painting, even though I love particular places and I feel something about them, I will though experiment and I don't mind painting something that's not, yeah, not so realistic. Okay, so I just ended up saying the same thing. Sorry about that. And here's another one. So I just love the play here with the colours. Yeah. And I did this in a way that normally you don't paint when, it, when you do a watercolour. So normally in watercolour painting, you go from light to dark. From light to dark. And with this one... I did the field first and I did the dark, the dark paint. And I did it very quickly with a big wide flat brush. And then I added this green and I think it's amazing. And for me, it's just an example of, it's not wrong to learn a method of painting, but at some point it's really good to try and change it and turn it on its head, even though it will probably go wrong because at some point it won't and you'll end up with something really good. And then I decided that I was going to paint a place called Ubuyama, Ubuyama in Japan that I went to before, amazing place. This is in Kumamoto Prefecture. And it's a very strange place because as you can see, it's like rolling hills. Now this, is not what Japan normally looks like. This is more like England. But this is the interesting thing. In Japan, when you go high up, suddenly on the tops of very, very high mountains, you get hills and it looks a bit like England. But can you see that there's a continuation here, which I like. I'm doing those same glowing skies with that punchy blue, then a red, then a yellow ochre, and then here these purplish clouds. And um, I really went wild with the textures. Can you see that? I love that. I really, really like that. I'm not sure if the painting is a success overall, but I will keep that one. And then the whole point of doing this is that I was going to add a bull eventually. So here's one with a bull. I'm not, I'm not sure the bull looks quite right and the sky looks a bit weird, a bit angelic, like an angel is coming down. And the contrast here is too, you know, this is so yellow and that's so green. They need to be more the same colour, but this one a bit bluer and greyer. So yeah, that one, yeah, maybe that should get thrown away. But here's another one <laughs> that's quite interesting but that doesn't work. Then I had another go and that didn't quite work. A bit like this. And then I think with this one, I started to get some success. So um, I changed the sky and I learned how to do a reddish sky uh, and really get a good glowy red in watercolor, which can be difficult and then to do these lovely bands of blue and then to do distant mountain ranges. And I'm not sure, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. But with these trees, I thought I'd do these rays, these shadowy rays or rays of light going down. I really like it, but I don't think it's completely natural. And then once again, my textural effect and then my bull. The bull, it's not quite right, is it? if I'm being honest, 
maybe passable, maybe passable. Let me know what you think. And then I did another one. And I think that one, maybe that one is a winner. I really like that. I know there's something that's not quite normal about it, but I like that too, because I've got to be a bit unique or different, I think, in order to be successful as an artist, I suppose. Gotta got be a bit of a purple cow, right? <laughs> Except that's not a purple cow. But you know, Seth Godin, you've got to be remarkable, which means people actually say something about your work. And sadly, that means often it's normally better to do something that's horrible because people will normally say something and try and do something beautiful because beautiful is almost like normal. But something that looks really awful is sometimes funny and people remark on it. Anyway, I'm rambling there. And here's another one. And I think that looks beautiful. There's not really a good place to add a cow there. That's what I learned. The cow needs to be like um, on top of a mountain or uh, not on a mountain, sorry, on top of like, um, like this. There needs to be like, um, it needs to be, what am I trying to say here? Like on the top of a ridge line or so that there's a kind of sky. They need to be silhouetted, that's it. They need to be like a silhouette with a sky or a faded background, like distant mountains behind them. So they really stick out. Yeah, so here I couldn't really do that because this mid background is too, too strong. And so the cow would not really stick out. That, that's what I thought anyway. And then here's one more. And this is a slightly new idea developing. I've still got to paint the cow with this one. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit weird that sky, isn't it? I'm not sure about that, but it's, it's getting there. But I did these long blades of grass and I might go over that again, just to make them a bit more distinct. But I quite like that having something right in the foreground. I think that's quite interesting. And I've got two, like, what do you call it, hills <laughs> in the foreground. How can, how can you forget that word? But there you go. So I've got like two hills or humpy things in the foreground. This, they're not quite matching, but I like that. And I think I'm going to try and I'm going, well, I am going to do this again and try and make it work. But I'm, I'm quite happy with where this is going. I think it's looking good, but you tell me what you think in the comments. So that's the painting. So I finished talking about the painting. Now briefly to talk about Gauguin. So I'm really enjoying reading about Gauguin. And his life is very remarkable. So... He was living, I think, in Denmark with his wife, trying to do a job. And basically, he worked very hard and he ended up losing money. And it was only because he sold a painting that he had by another artist that he could pay off his debts. Can you believe that? He actually got into debt from doing his job. So he had a very hard time. So anyway, he gave, gave up the job came back to Paris and he just walked in to his friend's house and plonked him down, plonked himself down on the sofa and just said, basically, I'm staying here. So very interesting. And he brought one of his children with him because he's got many children. And anyway, he's wandering around the streets of Paris. And this is somebody who was successful, is is it bourgeoisie? Bourgeoisie. Yeah, that kind of person. Upper middle class, yeah. But um, his wife sent his clothes to him, but they got sent. Well, I'm not sure where they got sent, but he, he ended up not getting them. So he's just got one, one suit of clothes that he wears all the time and it's becoming tattered and it's getting torn and so he's looking like this 
middle-class gentleman who's very shabby and fallen upon hard times and then his child gets sick and he has to do a very menial job but he does it and helps his child to recover well buys the medicine and his child recovers anyway it's not going well but then he goes to the sea he goes to Brittany because he's heard of this place with a woman who well she looks favorably upon artists and uh, lets them stay for a very cheap rent at her house and gives them very cheap meals and so he goes there and basically he has the chance to paint all the time and I think when he went there he was very thin and now he's eating well he's drinking wine every day he's having a good time and he's getting fat and it's very interesting because he talks about how happy he is to be coming to be becoming to be getting fat to be getting fat so he's really happy about that and he he's still very much like caught up with the impressionists he actually did an exhibition with them and some of the top names didn't come to the exhibition and i think gogan was hoping that he would this was his chance to make his name but he didn't another artist i think called surat i don't know how you pronounce it but he he basically stole the show he did a really remarkable painting i don't think it's very beautiful but it was very different and so everybody talked about him and basically gogan didn't get noticed that much so it is very painful as an artist I think soul destroying often but anyway he he does though eventually get success in this sea town this sea town called Pont Pont Aven just a minute I've got it here yeah Pont Aven in Brittany um, basically he has a bit of a, a, a squabble with another artist and maybe he wins it and then other artists start to respect him and he actually gets a gang of followers other artists so some of these artists they become heavily influenced by Gauguin's work even though he's still himself not fully um, developed his style he's kind of moving from impressionism and going outdoors and painting what's there to doing more studio work and going from landscape to figures so maybe you know the painting that he do, he does of those women is it washing in in breton those bretony women and they've got those wide white collars and the sign that he's changing is that the figures are very flat and there's a sort of almost abstract quality to the painting and that's him moving away from the more impressionist kind of painting that tries to be more like um, yeah to be out in nature copying nature exactly as it is not doing things that look abstract or flat but more rounded or natural whatever anyway I think that's roughly the idea of impressionism but within impressionism itself you do get characters who are kind of they're not doing that exactly they're kind of altering it changing it playing around with it as well and so is Gauguin but anyway he gets these four or five followers and some of them are like influenced by him and that goes into their work and then that becomes a part of their work but then later on they develop into their own individual style but maybe one or two of them just started to paint like Gauguin and then basically never stopped and one of them his style is so like Gauguin that some really well not such what what can I say like semi quasi criminal art dealers would sell 
paintings by these other artists and say that they were done by Gauguin because they were that similar. So one or two of them just completely copied him. But anyway, he's having a lovely time at this place, apart from the letters he gets with his wife, from his wife. So they're having a very difficult time and she can't really understand him. And he wants her to be more sympathetic to what he wants to be, which is a great artist. And she just has no, yeah, no interest in being that person. She's not going to support him or encourage him. So, and he's also a bit worried that she's neglecting the children, although he's not there either, is he? So there, there's that worry he's got as well. But besides that, he's having a real wonderful time at this place. And um, until, because all good things come to an end, right? And so when it gets around to autumn time, all the artists and a lot of famous people who come there to meet the artists, they all just um, go back home and he's there in the evening alone. And he writes about being there by the fire alone. And so he decides to also leave and go back, I think, to Paris and to a pottery where he's making, yeah, pottery so um, but anything else to add to that there is another interesting detail but I can't remember it now yes he's not at all interested in women so I think this is a place where artists are popular and there are opportunities but the interesting thing about him especially when we know what he's going to be like in the future right go to exotic island, have girlfriends who are like 14 years old, which is, yeah, a bit too much, right? But this period of his life, he's not at all interested in women. And he's just not, he's just almost like celibate, I think. So it's, it's just interesting for me and I hope you find it interesting too. So that's really everything except for my gardening attempts because you know my dream is to live in the Japanese countryside, grow organic vegetables and paint. And um, I'm also doing sprouting now and this is my alfalfa. So <laughs> I don't know how you pronounce it. And I'm also growing snap peas and it's quite fun. So in a week or two, I'll be doing another creative update. Maybe I'll call it creative update. So I really appreciate it if you like this video and also any comments would be wonderful. So see you in a week or two. Bye for now.